story ever told. The story of God becoming man. We call this story Christmas. Today we will worship in song as we go through the story, celebrating the incarnation when God became flesh. In Luke 1 and 2, we find the story which we will read from the Passion Translation. During the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, the angel Gabriel was sent from God's presence to an unmarried girl named Mary, living in Nazareth, a village in Galilee. She was engaged to a man named Joseph, a true descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Grace to you, young woman, for the Lord is with you, and so you are anointed with great favor. This is the same message Christmas gives to each of us. Mary was deeply troubled over the words of the angel and bewildered over as to what this may mean for her. But the angel reassured her, saying, Do not yield to your fear, Mary, for the Lord has found delight in you and has chosen to surprise you with a wonderful gift. You will become pregnant with a baby boy, and you are to name him Jesus, and he will be supreme and will be known as the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God will enthrone him as king on his ancestor David's throne. He will reign as king of Israel forever, and his reign will have no end. Mary said, But how could this happen? I am still a virgin. The spirit of holiness will fall on you, and the Almighty God will spread the shadow of his power over you in a cloud of glory. This is why the child will be born to you and will be known as the Holy One of God. He will be holy and will be called the Son of God. And what's more, your age on Elizabeth has also become pregnant with a son. The barren one is now in her sixth month. Not one promise from God is empty of power, but nothing is impossible with God. Imagine the scene. A teenage Jewish girl who is betrothed to a young man named Joe has her world turned upside down. She's told she's going to become pregnant before she gets married without the consent of her fiancé. You can only imagine the thoughts going through her mind. But notice her reply. This is amazing. I will be a mother of the Lord. As a servant, I accept whatever he has for me. May everything you have told me come to pass. And the angel left her. We'd like to invite all of you to join us in singing, O oh, Come All You Faithful.
mighty one has worked a mighty miracle for me. Holy is his name. Mercy kisses all his godly lovers from one generation to the next. Mighty power flows from him to scatter all those who walk in pride. Powerful princes he tears from their thrones, and he lifts up the lowly to take their places. Those who hunger for him will always be killed, but the smug and the self-satisfied he will send away empty. Because he can never forget to show mercy, he has helped his chosen servant, Israel, keeping his promises to Abraham and to his descendants forever. We pick up the story in Luke 2. During those days, the Roman emperor, Caesar Augustus, ordered that the first census be taken throughout his empire. Everyone had to travel to his or her hometown to complete the mandatory census. So Joseph and his fiancée, Mary, left Nazareth, a village in Galilee, and journeyed to their hometown in Judea, to the village of Bethlehem, King David's ancient home. They were required to register there, since they were both direct descendants of David. Mary was pregnant and nearly ready to give birth. When they arrived in Bethlehem, Mary went into labor, and there she gave birth to her firstborn son. After wrapping the newborn baby in strips of cloth, they laid him in, in a feeding uh, trough, since there was no available space.
appeared in radiant splendor before him, lighting up the field with the blazing glory of God, and the shepherds were terrified. But the angel reassured them, saying, Don't be afraid. I have come to bring you good news, the most joyous news the world has ever heard. And it is for everyone, everywhere. For today in Bethlehem, a rescuer was born for you. He is the Lord Yahweh, the Messiah. You will recognize him by this miracle sign. You'll find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a feeding trough. Then, all at once, a vast number of glorious angels appeared, the very armies of heaven. And they all praised God, singing, Glory to God in the highest realms of heaven, for there is peace and a good hope given to the sons of men. Please join us in singing. Angels be heard upon high. Turned to their flock, ecstatic over what had happened. They praised God 
and glorified him for all they had heard and seen for themselves, just like the angel had said. Christmas is good news. Good news we should be excited about sharing with others. The disciples shared the story. It's been shared generation to generation since. It is still being shared. We want others to know this good news. We should go tell it on the mountain. Peace. 
Politicians and world leaders don't declare peace. Peace. But as the Bible says, in this world there is no peace. Mankind does not know the way, the true peace. Apart from God, there cannot be true peace on earth. Left to himself, man's ways always lead to violence and strife, along with the related anxieties and troubles of the heart. The world can only promote a counterfeit peace because it is temporary, it's conditional, and it's inspired by human nature. But by contrast, God's peace through Jesus is permanent, unconditional, and all-inclusive, and inspired by the Holy Spirit, God himself. Jesus said, the peace I give to you is my peace. I don't give you peace the way the world gives, so don't be troubled in your hearts and don't be afraid. True everlasting peace, the kind that only comes from God through Jesus, is multi-dimensional. There's three ways that's the case. It's peace first between God and us. You and I have a direct line of peace to God. Secondly, it's peace among men. It's peace between you and I. It's at peace with another, one another, through God. And then third is peace within each of us. You know, we talk about peace of mind. If you don't have peace of mind, nothing really else matters in life. You know, if you have everything you want, but you don't have peace of mind about it, you might as well don't have it. It's a settled, content, joyful spirit. It's where the soul can be set at rest and find peace, even in the midst of storm. Anybody know how to have peace in the midst of storms? Have you had that? Okay, so you can testify. After his resurrection, Jesus greeted his disciples, saying, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. If Jesus is with you, then peace is certainly with you. And he is sending us as instruments of his peace. Amen. Third is goodwill. Goodwill toward men or peace upon those upon whom his favor rests. Now this goodwill and favor start with God as the source. His goodwill and favor were manifest in sending Jesus as our Savior, as our Redeemer, and as our Lord. Jesus came to take away the sin of the world and to redeem us from the death penalty that was owed because of sin. Ephesians 2.17 says Jesus came to deliver a message of peace. He is the messenger of peace. But to whom specifically was he sent? Remember the angels had said the good news of God's birth was to all people, bring joy to all people. So this goodwill and this favor from God was for all of mankind. Okay, what about to those whom his favor rests? God's not just selecting on you and you, but not you and you. God says that it's about who among mankind will respond in such a way as to receive it. It's available to all. God sent his son to save the world, but he will not force his salvation on anyone. A person must choose to change his way and surrender his life to Jesus. Trusting in the perfect work of Jesus that Abraham sent for us and receive the gift of grace that includes forgiveness, reconciliation, and salvation. That person now comes under the favor with God and receives the peace of God that is in Jesus. Romans 5, 1 says, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ. This opportunity is for everyone. No exceptions. God does not want anyone to perish, but rather that all should repent and that the whole world will be saved. That is the good will. That is the favor of God toward humanity. And that's the beginning of peace on earth because God sent the priest of peace to earth. It's because of Jesus, brothers and sisters, that glory goes up to the Father, God. It's because of Jesus that peace comes down to us. And those of us who are in Christ, those of us upon whom God's favor rests, we shall have the perfect peace of God. One commentary sums it up this way. Because of Jesus, the goodwill of God toward men is glory to God in the highest and peace on the earth. Glory, peace, and goodwill. All of these were centered on Jesus, whose coming to earth as a baby was the beginning of great joy on tall people. How is that for a proclamation coming directly from angels we have heard on high? Amen? Amen. I'd like to ask you to join us in singing Silent Night.